I'm gonna give you the cheat code of all cheat codes to grow your own food. You're gonna wanna watch this video all the way to the end because I'm gonna teach you how to grow more fruits and vegetables in a small space, in an urban backyard, even on your own commercial farm, I can help you to increase your yields up to 40%. Let's go on a quick little tour of Grow Moringa Farms to explain and show you exactly how I've been able to do that exact same thing here over the last two years. So the first thing I did was put this hole in the ground in the lowest spot of the property where all the water settles. I dug a huge hole here so that way this could be a retention pond during the summer months and all the water on the property could come right here to this location. And then the next thing that I did was plant a bunch of bananas around that. And we haven't had to, had to buy bananas in over two years because of the fact that these <laughs> banana plants are pumping out so much bananas that we've been able to harvest all through the winter. We harvested all through the, the hurricanes. And what I've been able to do is feed these bananas, not only lots of water from the property, but also our biostimulant, which essentially is made from Moringa. Another way that you're going to be able to get more food and more vegetables in less than 30 days is to essentially create raised beds and mounds using oak mulch, chips. Underneath these mounds are just sticks and sticks and sticks from the property, from harvesting Moringa. And I was able to build up a mound here and cover it with compost of soil and then cover that with mulch. Then I sprayed the biostimulant powder and also sprayed the biostimulant extract, the liquid, and that helps to increase the nitrogen content, the vitamin and mineral content of the chips because they're breaking down and so they're absorbing all of those things from the environment. I'm looking at mulch chips, oak chips, as a form of slow release fertilizer. Let's continue walking to show you exactly how beautiful this little plot here of nine raised beds has been beginning to pump out tons and tons of Moringa uh, and other food like mulberries and figs and bananas. And we have a few other plants that are starting to come in and I'm gonna plan on planting a fruit tree on the end of each one of these raised beds on this side. And then I have a Moringa tree on the end of the raised bed on this side. And the Moringa here is acting as a pioneer crop it's helping to start my farm. It's the first crop and the first plant that I wanted to plant here to increase my yields of all my other fruits and veggies. So growing Moringa as a pioneer crop to get your farm established is going to start helping you put mycelium and life and bioactivity back into the soil. This area right here was actually a low sink it literally flooded every summer. I sat out here for the first summer and just watched this whole area get flooded. I said, man, let me call some tree trimming companies and let me see if I can get some oak mulch dropped off here. And that's what, exactly what I did. Two years ago, I started dropping oak mulch right here. I'm actually standing on over a foot of oak mulch right now. It's been breaking down over the last two years. And then from there, I began making these raised beds on top of it. Now, every two weeks, I apply the biostimulant powder. I put a little bit of powder over top, and then I spray a little bit of extract over top of that. And now here we are less than two weeks later, and all of our sprouts are starting to come in. Look at this. Moringa sprout. Now, this is our summer crop. And our winter crop that we had in here was kale and lettuce and onions and mint we grew here in the wintertime. Now that it's summertime, we switched over the beds and we are growing now our summer crop. Moringa is a great summer crop for you to increase the yields of your farm and to also grow on the off season. 
look at these beautiful moringa trees here that are beginning to bush out really nicely. This is the secret to growing more food and more veggies. Applying the biostimulant bi-weekly, put a little bit of powder, put a little bit of extract. I also help to spray the leaves and look how green and unspotty these leaves really are. And they have a nice beautiful red stem because they get the morning sun. That's the extra beta carotene. And also the extra vitamins, minerals. I know that the moringas are really healthy. When the stems begin to turn a little bit red there on the top. Beautiful, right? So this is my pride and joy. I've been working on this quite a bit and this is really starting to show the world how you can begin. This is less than two weeks. This is literally 14 days. I can now begin to come through here, pop these tops off, put them in a, in, in a, in a bin and take them to the farmer's market and sell fresh microgreens. People eat them up and they're a premium. We can charge more because they are a specialty item. This is not something that you can go and get in the store. Got some mulberries. So we're starting to plant fruit trees on the ends of this side of the raised beds. The trick to growing more food, applying the biostimulant, and also just continually layering all of your soil and topping off all of your soil every single year with fresh oak mulch. We don't let any soil exposed. And we add a dressing of oak mulch every single year. So what I did a few weeks ago was I pulled out over 150 pounds of turmeric from these uh, trees out here in the front. And some of the turmerics and some of the arrow roots and some of the gingers that were left in these beds are starting to come back out. So we have a large tree over here. I'll show you real quick where our turmeric is. So we're beginning to grow gingers and turmerics. You know, we started with moringa. Then I brought in gingers, turmerics, bananas, and I'm trying to get to like a top five, my top five of of crops to produce for income and just kind of really sticking with those five out here and then also incorporating wildflowers pollinators fruit trees say maybe even just for myself um, and begin to create an agro tourism type of site where we could bring people in on saturdays they can pick their own moringa they can pick their own turmeric they can pick their own gingers fresh from the field and um, it's, it's gonna be a really beautiful experience that we're actually excited with this video to come out with because I just finished my book, Grow Moringa, The Ultimate Guide. So if you wanna learn about how to get your farm started, how to do all these things, how to grow Moringa, The Ultimate Guide is now available at growmoringa.com. Get your copy today. It includes membership into the Grow Moringa Collective. So it's actually a 24 seven support network you can ask questions if there's something missing from the book which i don't think that there is or if you need help finding it you can always ask the collective is a community resource center for you as the grower as the interested grower and reader and um, i'm happy to be able to provide that for everybody that reads the book you get direct access to me uh, the author of the book inside of the members area so this is our other turmeric bed which we harvested already. You can see I just added a whole nother dressing and layer of oak mulch on top of this. And we're coming into our hedge, our hedge condition. So this hedge condition, what I did here was I took the tree and I created these rays of sunshine out from the tree. They radiate from the tree. And I'm in one of the rows right now. And it doesn't look like much right now because the frost pretty much took out all of the trees. But you can see there's a few that came back here. There's one that came back here. Let's see if I can get a little shot of this little mama came back from a cutting. So this was kind of like my hedge cuttings area, rays of sunshine out from the tree where I have these narrow walking paths that I can come into. And in between, there's a really tight, dense, area of moringa trees like this in this hedge condition or fedge 
I have all of my designs inside of my book, Grow Ring of the Ultimate Guide. You can get access to all the graphics and all the material inside the book now at growmoringa.com. So we went through the intensive, got to see the hedge. Now we're walking into the orchard. And the orchard is right now about, let's see, one, two, three, four, four rows. It fills up about a quarter of an acre. I started with this tree right here on the front corner about two years ago. Started with these two trees and this line right here that went down and started to begin to develop these four rows. All of these designs are available inside of Grow Moringa, the Ultimate Guide, inside my book. So you can actually get Kendrick Henry Moringa Orchard Design, Kendrick Henry Fetch Design, and Intensive Design inside of the book. I have all the graphics to show you exactly how I did this, how this is laid out spatially. What it is, is a, a, uh, a roadway of 12 feet and then a raised bed of 12 feet. And then on that raised bed, every four feet, so four foot is a tree, four foot is a tree, and then four foot is the end of the bed. So four, eight, 12, right? So start of the bed, four foot is a tree. Four foot over is another tree. And then four foot over is the end of the bed. But the thing is with the trees is that they're not next to each other. They're staggered like a tic-tac-toe, like a checkerboard. So we got the first one here. And then you go five feet down and you've got another one. You go five feet down this way and you have another one. And you go five feet down this way and you have another one. Essentially in the line, they are 10 feet apart in the line. 10 feet apart in the line. But they're staggered. So that way they're only five feet apart on the diagonal. So that goes all the way down. I'm starting to, you can see, load up my turmeric bed that looks like this after the harvest. It's got grass growing through it. It's depleted, it's low. Some of the turmeric are even starting to come back in, some that I missed. What I'm doing is I'm dropping a whole nother layer, a foot of oak mulch and drop it on top. The secret to a successful farm is biostimulant, and layering oak mulch on top of the soil regularly and starting with a layer of oak mulch on the ground. So I'm standing on two feet of oak mulch. After dropping all that oak mulch over there, dropping that oak mulch over there where the hedge is, I also had the tree trimming companies just come here over the last two years and just dump every single day loads and loads and loads of oak mulch. And we're standing on a pillow of oak mulch and that has been essentially the base of all of these trees. Here we are two years later. Uh, it's been, she, these have been through two winters. Some of them didn't make it the first winter. Some of them didn't even make it this winter. Like this one didn't even make it through this winter. I can tell that it didn't make it through this winter because there's nothing there, right? All the other ones are nice and big. Everything that you see here in the green has been coming back since March, since our last frost. So everything that you see here is March, April, May. March, April, and now we're in May. So this is two months of growth. So this is now six feet tall, seven feet tall in two months. So it grew about a foot a week. <laughs> and now if I was to let this tree go, She's starting to produce flowers. She's got flowers all the way up there. And that's how you keep your Moringa tree bushy is popping off all your flowers. Just keep popping off flowers and your trees will be bushy. You can also eat. Mm. Every part of the tree is edible. Look at these babies coming back. This is our beautiful orchard here. I'm driving through here keeping the rows really wide so that way we have lots of airflow we can bring in and out lots of materials and the next step to this because this is just phase one of this farm this is just to get the farm going this is just a pioneer crop to establish this farm and and in the two years that I've been here exactly 
let's just say, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars being made from these trees. How am I doing that? Branding, making videos, being available. People ask, how much can I make from Moringa? Well, there's a $20 bottle of wine and there's a $2,000 bottle of wine. Which bottle of wine are you? Are you gonna sell your Moringa for $5 a kilo or are you gonna sell it for $100 a kilo? And that really just depends on your branding and what you do to essentially solidify yourself inside of the space. And that's what I've been doing is carving out a niche in the Moringa space to be able to provide education, to provide lots of uh, services like harvesting and also products. So uh, consultations, teaching, I'm available on webinars pretty much almost every day. The last couple weeks, I've just been working on my book. It's finally done, and that's why I'm here giving you a quick tour of Grow Moringa, the, the, the farm. It's starting to get hot out here. It's getting a little sweaty, but these trees are loving the heat. They love, love the heat. Now, there, I've noticed there are a few different types of Olifera. There are these ones here that are really, really green and never really, really turn red. Um, it might be a difference in the in PKM1 or PKM2. Uh, it might be a few other things as far as like the location that the seeds came from. And so mostly they're all pretty much the same, but I can tell that there are a few out here that don't get any of the red tips and they just stay really, really green. It's getting really dry. We actually got some rain last night. That's another reason why I wanted to come out and show you. Uh, this is not irrigated. This field is not irrigated because I've been able to establish the farm very cheaply uh, with no irrigation, free essentially with the oak mulch. This is now the next step of this farm is to put down irrigation and start installing fruit trees and other pollinators. And so what I've been doing is coming out here and clearing out these, these front end caps. My end caps are going to include lots of pollinators, lots of low herbs and fruit, ground covers, so that way I can begin to flow those into the rows. So this is just two years going into the creation of a sustainable regenerative food forest uh, with uh, low income, so to speak. You know, I have been forcing myself to spend money on the business. And so I spent a lot of money on marketing, advertising, and um, bringing you guys all this content. And that's one of the reasons that this farm has been so successful in the first two years of getting it established opening it up to people at times on the weekends and Saturdays to say, come on out to the farmer's market and, and, and here, have a farmer's market here. Um, and, and so I've been able to build out small little areas and began to expand my little herb gardens with pineapples, katook. Uh, we've got some vitex here, which is a chast tree. Uh, it's from Asia and it's a heavy heavy pollinator as well as the sweet almond here heavy pollinator i've been um, making cuttings from these plants and watering them every day and putting them in pots to create new cuttings and so uh, i gotta get these babies watered but it looks like they're still they're still alive and i feel like they're they're creating roots down there and i'll be able to take these cuttings and put them out into the field so I started with just accumulating plants from around the neighborhood and around town and bringing them here little by little, cutting them out, splitting them out, and then spreading them around the property. It just takes a little bit of time, but those essentially are the cheat codes to growing a lot more food, a lot more fruit and vegetables in a short amount of time. The cheat code is in Moringa. Get Moringa going, get it established, Get a feel for plants. If, you, if, you, if you're not a plant person or if you haven't grown anything yet, Moringa is the ideal candidate for getting your farm and operation going. Learn everything that you need to learn about Moringa in my new book, Grow Moringa, The Ultimate Guide. Thanks for watching. Peace, love, and prosperous growing. I'll see you soon.